Now let's go ahead and let's replace the code which we have up over here into its very own component, which is the food item component. So let's create a new component here and let's call that component as food item dot JSX export default function. That's going to be food item. Let's make it return a div. All right. So over here, I could now simply take this code, which I have cut this from here and paste it inside this food item component, save this. And I could now go ahead and simply include the food item component here. So this will map through every single food item, which is present inside the array. And it will render a food item component for every single of that item. So this is what we want to do. And this food data, which we are getting here, we could pass that data as prop to the food item. And that's because the food item actually requires that particular food data. So let's pass that up over here as props. So food is going to be equal to food. Let's access that over here. So food and that's it. Now, if I go back to the browser, this still works. And finally, now what we could do is we could go ahead and start styling this food item as we want. So for example, right now, the food item only consists of this food title. But along with this, let's say I also want to display the image and a view recipe button along with every food item which I have. So in order to do that, let's say I want to add an image here. So I could say image and the source for this is going to be this URL, which we have. So if you take a look at every single food item here, every single item, just like the title, it also has the image as well, which is an actual URL, which points to an image. So over here, I could say food dot image. And if I save this, go back here. Now, as you can see, we have the name of the recipe along with the image displayed up over here. So in a similar fashion, you could also go ahead and display the ID as well, but we are not concerned with the ID. Therefore, we won't use it up over here. Now, one more thing which I want to add to every single food item is I want to add a button which says, all right, we have this food item, but now I want to view the recipe for that item. So let's add a button over here as well. So button, that button is going to say view recipe. So this button is not going to be functional yet. We are going to make that functional later. But as of now, this is what our application looks like and it looks pretty much ready. However, if you hit refresh, as you can see, you'll get one error in the console which says that every child in a list should have a unique key prop. And you get this error because whenever you're using a map to render multiple items. So for example, here we are using map to render multiple items inside the food data array. And in such cases, what you should always do is that you should always add a key prop over there as well. That means over here for this food data or this food item, you need to pass in the key over here. So the key prop needs to be something unique. So we can use the ID of these items as the key prop. So over here, I could say food.id is going to be our key. And as soon as I do that, if I hit refresh, we no longer get that warning here. So the warning over here, as you can see, has now disappeared. So now the left part of our application is looking pretty much ready. But the thing is, there's no styling applied to it. So in the next lecture, let's go ahead and let's start styling our application. So in the next lecture, first of all, let's create a nav component at the very top. And after creating the nav component, let's also style the search bar. And after styling the search bar, let's also style the food items, which we have up over here as well. And then we could start working on the right part of our application, which is to get the recipe details for every single item, which we have here. So let's start working on that in the next lecture.